Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I'm Ryan on this channel. I react to stuff from Australia. Duh. Duh, mate. And today I've got 10 actors you never knew were Australian. Well, you might have known. Uh, Hugh Jackman. So that's about all I know. I don't really know anything about celebrities, so I guarantee I don't know anything other than Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Let's see. Australia is known for its beautiful beaches, outback, and of course, overly large and poisonous animals. However, that's mm -hmm. not the only thing. Australia is also known for producing some of the greatest actors of our generation, with them nailing any accent or dialect they're required to do. Yeah. Why is that? A lot of people don't know these actors are in fact Aussies. However, I'm here to out them all. So today on Top 10 Beyond the Screen, I'm going to be counting down. Is the American accent just that easy to like do an impression of? Our list of the top 10 actors you never knew were Australian. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. Beyond the screen. Coming in at 10, Hugh Jackman. I mean, wow, of I didn't he's know. on our list. While most at this point may know this actor doesn't hail from the States, some young- I freaking love Hugh Jackman though. Oh my God, this is the greatest show. Viewers may not. Look, you're gonna strip plating flakes off. Yeah. You know, this is the least. No one's going to pay to ride. Star of X-Men, Les Miserables, <laughs> Greatest Showman and Prisoners, Hugh Jackman was actually born and raised in New South Wales, Australia, appearing early on in his career in shows such as Corelli and Snowy River before landing... I never knew he was Australian, though, until, like, uh... Well, I started doing these videos. I think I learned it in a different video. His breakout role in 2000's X-Men as Logan, aka Wolverine. After that, his career well and truly took off. He was a badass at Wolverine. With the actor being one of the most sought after in the industry, appearing in works such as Van Helsing, The Prestige, and The Front Runner. It took years for folks to learn that this actor was an Aussie, with his American <laughs> accent being better than most Americans. How does that work? Don't fight me on that. Come in at nine, Jason. <laughs> kind of like how my Australian accent is better than most Aussies, right? It's honestly better than most Australians. Probably better than Hugh Jackman. You know, he might have me beat on the, uh, the wanker accent. The yanker, yanker accent. Wanker? Jason Clark. Jason Clark is an incredibly versatile actor with roles in films such as Mudbound, Everest, Zero Dark Thirty, Pet Cemetery, and First Man. So you like to be honest, I don't know who Which this is. Mudbound. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jason Clark. I'm Everest, sorry, guys. Zero Dark Thirty, Pet Cemetery, and not First that. Man. I did like Pet Cemetery. Definitely not Boston. Oh, it's this guy. Ah, yeah. Here we go. Okay. So see, I don't know actors' names, but when I see them in the in in the scene, I'll be like, oh. oh. What do you think? Wow. I heard a little Aussie there. Did you hear that? What do you think? Here we go. Okay, so. What do you think? Just a little bit. Wow. This whole place is ours. However, thanks to his flawless American dialect, many don't even realize that this actor hails from Queensland, Australia. Jason began his career in his mid 20s, appearing in TV shows such as Water Rats and Blue Healers. Before what a random, like, how is it that p people from Australia, the furthest, most isolated place, like, on the planet, Obviously, we have planes and stuff, so it's not actually that isolated. You can just, you know, take a plane. But, like, how do they end up in Hollywood being famous actors? Maybe it's because of how they look. They're very beastly men, you know, large. For landing a reoccurring role on the popular soap opera, Home and Away. His big international break was when he landed a role alongside Shia LaBeouf and Michael Douglas in Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, before going on to appear in Lawless, Texas Killing Fields, and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This dude just doesn't stop. Coming in at eight. Oh, he was in Planet of the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Jason Clark. Planet. Wow, I can spell, guys. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay. Emily the Raven. This is our appetizer. She's supposed to be back. She's not back. That girl. She's Australian? I couldn't have told Maybe you. Yeah, one of your suspects? Her name. You act like one. My dad needs to take care of people. He just doesn't know what's going on right now. Now that is flawless. You want to talk about flawless? That sounds so American. You act like one. My dad needs to take care of people. He just doesn't. <laughs> She's even doing like some 
I don't know. She has a unique voice, not only American, but like. I don't know what's going on right now. What's going on right now? Emily DeRaven has popped up in many smash hits over the years, mostly uh, opting yes. for smaller. I recognize her now. Indie roles, but once in a while landing a big Hollywood gig. DeRaven, of course, shot to fame when she starred as Claire Littleton in Lost, which ran. Oh my god. It's Claire. Oh from 2004. my god. I'm so dumb. It's Claire. Lost is like my favorite show ever. To 2010. Whether prior to that. Wow, she's Australian? That she also appeared in the popular TV. Wait, she's Australian in the show. <laughs> TV series Roswell as Tess Harding. Many still don't know that DeRaven is Australian, with the actress being born and raised in Mount Eliza, Victoria. However, she didn't always want to be an actress. When she was 15, she was accepted at the highly selective Australian Ballet School in Melbourne before dropping out and undertaking acting and landing her first role in the TV series Beast. Some people are just good at things, you know. Master. As of now, you won't find DeRaven in much, with the star just last year rapping on Once Upon a Time. However, she does have one TV movie in the works called Scorned, which is set to be released next year. Coming in at seven. I just can't get over the fact I was actually surprised. <laughs> She's Australian, but in, in Lost, she plays an Australian girl. Joel Edgerton. I didn't even know she was sick. I never even got the chance to say goodbye to my own mother. Joel Edgerton is a highly sought after actor uh. these days with a career that ranges from comedy, drama, horror to full scale action films. With the actor appearing I in work no idea. such as The Gift, The Great Gatsby, Red Sparrow, It Comes at Night, and Midnight Special. However, little did some fans know, Joel Edgerton was born and raised in New I liked that It Comes at Night. South Wales, Australia. His brother Nash is also in the industry, but as a stunt coordinator, even being Joel's stunt double in a handful of films, including <laughs> The Great Gatsby. Zero Dark Thirty and The Night We Called It A Day. Joel attended the Nepean Drama School in 1994, with the actor finally breaking into the industry in 2001, when he starred in the Australian TV series The Secret Life of Us, before landing his big international break in Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Is there like a big production scene in Australia? Like a lot of, a lot of uh, TV shows being produced? I just don't know, I'm not familiar, like playing Owen Lars. Coming in at 6, Dominic Purcell. Born in England and raised in Australia, this Legends of Tomorrow star shocked everyone when it was revealed that he was in fact an Aussie. The Harvey Oswald, John Wilkes Booth. Now this guy, I don't, I don't think I know. I don't, I don't think I know this guy. Lincoln Burroughs. I'm gonna go down in history. I'm like the dumbest person to ever make this video. With these freaks. This actor shot to fame when- <laughs> Wow, this man I don't recognize is Australian. Oh my god. He appeared in Fox's hit 2005 TV series Prison Break, with the actor playing a wrongly convicted prisoner on death row. However, most will know him from the CW show Legend. That actually sounds really cool. I'm gonna watch that. Legends of Tomorrow, in which this Aussie plays criminal arsonist Heatwave. When growing up in Australia, Purcell lived a very blue collar lifestyle and turned to a life of acting after growing bored of landscaping. Following which time he enrolled wow. in the Western Australia Academy of Performing Arts, with the actor being a classmate of fellow actor Hugh Jackman. Well, he clearly picked up some good tricks at school because the actor masks his Aussie accent incredibly well to the point that it still shocks some longtime fans when they hear him speak in his native accent. Coming in at five, Rose Byrne. I'd like to take this opportunity to honor Lil and Doug with a short poem I penned while sitting on a swing in an exclusive resort in- There's no way she's Australian, dude. Listen to that. I had no idea. Lil and Doug with a short poem I penned while sitting on a swing in an exclusive resort in telephony- See, she doesn't even overdo the American accent. I, I had no idea. The secret Aussie rose to fame back in 2004 when she was cast in Troy alongside Brad Pitt, before going on to star in 28 Weeks Later, Bridesmaids, X-Men, and of course Insidious. Aside from Neighbours- Insidious, that's where I recognize her mostly from. You'll never find Rose Byrne speaking in a native accent on screen, with the actress mostly doing American or English accents, and nailing both of them time and time again. However, little did we know she was actually born in Sydney- I could understand nailing the English accent, because Australian is like a twist. It's like the more laid back English accent, I feel like. It's like a twist on it. It's very unique. More more difficult than an English accent. But um I could see how that translates to, to an English accent. American. Doing it that flawlessly. 
Sydney, New South Wales, with the actress making it big down under before relocating to the States and hitting the big leagues in Hollywood. As it stands, this Aussie is currently filming the TV series Mrs. America, where she plays Gloria Steinem, a real life American feminist, journalist, and social political activist. So, of course, mm. they turn to an Aussie to get the job done. Coming in at four, Nicole Kidman. An obligation to your own sanity. This is how, like, non culture. I, I didn't know Nicole Kidman is Australian. I am attended by doctors everywhere. I am attended by doctors who inform me of my own interests. Academy Award winning actor. You can hear it just a little bit, can't you? Just Nicole Kidman has been in the entertainment industry since she was a teenager, appearing in films such as Moulin Rouge, The Hours, for which she earned the Academy Award, Cold Mountain, Love Moulin Rouge, Mountain, and The Others. However, many still don't know that this starlet is actually Australian. Whether she was born in Hawaii to Aussie. She's like ultra famous, and I had no idea. Parents before moving down under once again. Oh. And her first film was one of my personal favorites, BMX Bandits, before hitting the big leagues in the States, starring in Days of Thunder, Far and Away, and To Die For. Famously, the actress married Tom Cruise, with the pair showing two children together before they parted ways in 2002. See, I didn't even know that. That's how, like, I, I how much I pay, pay attention to the pop stuff. I didn't even know that. Nicole is now appearing in the popular HBO series Big Little Lies alongside some other heavyweight actresses, including Reese Witherspoon, Laura Dern, Shailene Woodley, Zoe Kravitz, and Meryl Streep. And in more recent news, it has been confirmed that she will be starring in the new Ryan Murphy film The Prom alongside Meryl Streep, Ariana Grande, and James Corden. The film is set to be released in 2020. Coming in at three. Wow, I can't wait for 2020. Three, Travis Fimmel. Oh, Ragnar Lothbrok. Gone too soon. Travis Fimmel. 2020, you know, what could go wrong in 2020, you know? Oh, what it was like to be in 2019, mid-2019. mid, mid 2019. Oh, 2020 is going to be great. We're going to have new movies, you know? It's, it's going to be a great year, everybody. What could go wrong? Fimmel played the beloved character on Vikings for four seasons, with few fans knowing that he actually hails from Victoria, Australia. The actor first hit us. Really? Oh, Ragnar Lothbrok. Gone too soon. See, I don't even recognize that name, but Travis I recognize Fimmel this dude. Travis Fimmel played the beloved character on Vikings for four seasons, with few fans knowing that he actually hails from Victoria, Australia. The actor first hit our screens back in 2000. It's those eyes. It's the Aussie eyes. Look at that gaze. The Australian gaze. Because mm, you're looking through, like, the outback for miles. That's what, I think that's what lands so many Australians these roles. I mean, it's amazing how many Australians. Actors are Australian. 2003, when he appeared in the Tarzan TV series, before going on to star in Vikings, Warcraft, and Maggie's Plan. I always knew in my heart that I would see you again. But I never guessed that it would be in such circumstances. <laughs> Another beastly man, too. Who can guess the plans and ways of the gods? Far and Away, Vikings is his most notable performance, with the actor absolutely slaying the somewhat Old Norse slash Swedish accent. The Aussie star was raised on a 5,500 acre dairy farm back in Lockington, Victoria, cool. before moving to London and then on to the States. Do a lot of Australians raise Wagyu, Wagyu beef? Why do I, uh, I feel like a lot of Wagyu beef comes from Australia. Am I just making that up? As it stands, he is set to appear in an untitled television series about Wyatt Earp, where he will of course be playing the American frontiersman. Another accent I'm sure he'll absolutely nail. Coming in at two, Kate Blanchett. Ah, great Kate. Dearest, She's there are no accidents. L listen to that, wow. And no explanation I offer will satisfy. See, now I know what they mean when they say she does, like, people can do the American accent better than Americans. Satisfy you. That's a very crisp. There are no accidents, and no uh, explanation no, I offer that. will satisfy you. There are no accidents. Best known for her roles in Carol, Blue Jasmine, Lord of the Rings, and The Aviator. Did you know this successful actress was actually born in Melbourne back in 1969? The actress made it big back in the 90s. Damn, she looks good for being born. Uh, whatever, I'm not doing math. When she appeared at 53 years ago. The TV mini. That's actually not that long ago. <laughs> for some reason, I was thinking. That was longer ago. Okay. Series Heartland, Elizabeth, the talented Mr. Ripley, and Babel. She has over 70 credits to her name and has been nominated for six Academy Awards, winning two for Blue Jasmine and The Aviator. It's hard to tell that this actress hails from Down Under, with the star nailing every single accent she is required to do for a role, particularly the English accent. She does look good, though. 
sense, with Lord of the Rings and Notes on a Scandal being some of her best performances. Honestly guys, Great K can do uh, no wrong and if you haven't seen Carol yet, do Kaya. it. It's one of the greatest films to be made in the last decade. Honestly, I made this list just so I could talk about Carol. And finally coming in at number 1, Margot Robbie. Daddy shouldn't waste his time. <laughs> this girl's Australian? She has an Australian girl look, you know, the blonde, skinny. It's also kind of an American look, but I've noticed a lot of those Aussie ladies. Finally come in at number one, Margot Robbie. Daddy shouldn't waste his time. <laughs> that sounds like a whole accent in itself. And from now on, it's going to be nothing but short short skirts around the house. Now That's like a New York, a little bit upstate. Now, unless you were paying attention to Margot Robbie's brief cameo appearance in The Big Short, wow. then you might not be aware that she actually hails from Queensland, Australia, born in 1990. Did not know. Yep, this actress is just three years older than me, and I'm well and truly triggered. She I'm a little triggered. She's freaking one year older than me. Made her big break on Australian television when she landed the role of Donna Brown in the long running series Neighbours before heading to the States to star in the short lived series Pan Am. However, the film that gave her the biggest break was The Wolf of Wall Street, where she absolutely nailed the Brooklyn accent. This was perhaps yes. the first film folks saw wow. her in, which only added more. Com That's not easy. Like, I can't even do a Brooklyn. I, I'm not even gonna try. Fusion when they discovered she wasn't in fact American. For the most part, you'll never find Margot doing her native accent in a film. Aside I need a, a cup of coffee, okay? Make it quick, okay? I don't have time to be uh, standing around here waiting on your coffee, okay? This is ridiculous. Aside from the aforementioned Big Shaw, with the actress appearing in Suicide Squad. Okay, I didn't know she was Harley Quinn. That's awesome. Squad, I, Tonya, She's a legend. Then. Mary Queen of Scots and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All of which. How crazy is that? American finds out who played Harley Quinn and that she's Australian. Wow. She either did an American accent or an English one. As it stands, she has been nominated for just one Oscar, but I can only predict there'll be more coming. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any Aussies that we missed? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know if you missed any. I'm, I'm shocked and amazed, honestly. That's awesome. Uh, all of them surprised me except Hugh Jackman because I just don't, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't like pay attention to people's names, basically. And their American accents, for the most part, were fantastic. I heard like one little hint of an Aussie coming through on that one dude, but that was it. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for watching with me. Thank you for watching my video. Hey, subscribe if you want to see some more Australian reactions. I mean, I do this every weekday. I did miss yesterday because that video got blocked in like five different ways. But I try to do this every weekday, okay? Happy Arvo. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for subscribing or just watching. Don't care. Yes, I do. Goodbye.